In the last episode, I shown you how I fit the second hand window and door on the workshop. And in this episode, we will be doing all of the cladding. And now would be a great time to get yourself a cup of tea because something tells me this will be a long one. <laughs> After a lot of research looking into different types of cladding, I have decided that I'm going to be using this plastic composite cladding. The one I've gone for is black with a wood effect grain in it. Nice. When comparing the price of this composite cladding against your more traditional timber cladding, this does work out a lot more expensive. Roughly speaking, it is gonna be about twice as much once everything is fully done. However, when I compared the benefits of this over timber, I made the decision to go with this, and that is mainly because I'm never going to need to treat it with any sort of wood preserver or paint ever again. And I have decided that I'm going to fit this cladding vertically along the front and two side walls of all of the workshop. However, before I start to attach that cladding, there are a few preparation steps that I must take. Before I put any batten on the walls this morning, I am just gonna go around the top and the bottom of all of those gaps and put this up. This is insect mesh. This is important because it's going to prevent insects treating the cladding on your workshop as their hotel. It will also stop things like rodents and most importantly, things like bees making a nest in there. And the way I'm doing this here is I am holding it in the gap that I left in the soffit. Now that that insect mesh is in place, the next thing I'm going to do is cut down all of the vertical lengths of batten to the correct length using the miter saw. And now those battens are cut, essentially what I need to do is fix each of them to the outer walls. And I do want to make sure that I'm lining them up with the internal uprights. And the way I've done that is marked a piece of batten on the inside of the workshop with where all of those uprights fall, and then transferred that to the outside onto the felt using a piece of chalk. And because this is the first layer of battens, there's actually going to be another layer going vertically across these as well. I am only going to be nailing in these. And the reason for that is because when I put that second layer on, I'll be using 100 mil screws that will be enough to go through both of these into the studs behind them. So this will save quite a lot of time with pre-drilling and getting the screws in that initial layer. And you'll also save a lot of screws. So now all of the vertical battens have been fixed to the wall, it is time to do the horizontal battens. The reason that it's important to have two layers of batten, the vertical battens that you can see here, and that allows air from the bottom of the workshop to go up underneath the panelling and circulate within the joists of your roof. And these vertical battens would be absolutely fine if you were laying your cladding horizontally. But because I'm laying my cladding vertically, I then need to put on a second layer of horizontal battens like this, so that when it comes to cladding, I have somewhere to actually fix that cladding at several points like I'm showing you now. And I don't know if you can see this, but I've got a little screw just sticking out down there that is going to allow me to hook that on at one end. And I will be putting one of those screws into every single place that that vertical batten runs. And these battens do actually split quite easy, so I recommend pre-drilling every single hole. And for every single horizontal piece, I'm going to space them apart 600 mil. And before I put this last horizontal batten in, I am just going along the bottoms here and stapling the insect mesh to the first battens we put on. And that's just going to keep it out of the way and allow the insect mesh to keep the creepy crawlies out. So now all of those battens are actually up, but I've just done it for the front wall. And I can tell you that this is taking a whole lot longer than I thought. This front wall, to get it just battened out, has taken me the best part of three hours. And because this is much of the same process throughout the entire thing, I am just going to skip ahead to when all of the walls have been battened out. But on screen now, you can see a series of photos that show exactly how I did the batten on every single one of the walls, including around the windows, which you can use as a reference point in case you need to do a wall that is similar. So you can see on every single corner, I've put in an extra piece, and that's just to make sure that the corner sections have something to butt up against when they're in. On the bottom of every single wall and at the top, I've got a double batten and that's just to make sure that I've got room for the piece at the top that covers the cladding as well as enough room to actually fix the cladding onto some batten at the top. Around the door, I've also double battened around the entire edge and I have done the same thing for the window. So I've double battened around the window and I've left about a 20 mil gap underneath the window and that is just to allow air to get through up here 
and actually circulate through the bottom of the timber underneath the window as well. And the, at the back of the workshop, it is a little bit harder to film, but I've only got four pieces of batten going across. And the reason for that is I'm going to be using the metal cladding down here, which is a lot more rigid. So there's not as much need to have as many fixing points. And for those that are wondering if 100 mil wood screws going through both of the battens is strong enough. I'm Spider-Man there. That's strong. Now all of the prep work is finally done. The first thing I need to do before actually putting the cladding on the walls is prepare the corners and the edges and that's just for the actual cladding to slot into. I have just cut down this first corner piece on my miter saw and I'm going to be fixing it to this corner using some 35 mil, three and a half mil screws. And apparently there is no need to pre-drill this plastic so hopefully it doesn't actually split. And that's going to hold that in place lovely. And the way that these work is you put the first part of the corners in, then you do your cladding, and then you get the second part of the corners, and this clicks into place and holds it just like that. And if you ever need to take it off, it's just a case of popping this out like that. So quite a neat little solution there. Now, once those corners are in, the next thing you need to do is fit this. I don't even know what it's called, the top and the bottom bit. I have used part two of the corners. I've just used a bit of scrap and fixed them at the top here, just so I know exactly where this needs to butt up to. And unfortunately, this is only three meters long and I need it to be about 3.1 meters. So I will have to cut a little scrap piece for the end. So I'm gonna fix this just here using those same 35 millimeter screws. And we do have to fit the exact same piece along the bottom of the walls as well. The only difference is being at the bottom, the cladding is going to fall into this. So there is a chance that this over time will collect water. So the manufacturer does recommend drilling in a 10 mil hole every 100 millimeters along the entire length of every piece of this that goes at the bottom. I've drilled in all of my drainage holes along the bottom here. And because I know each of these battens is perfectly level, all I'm going to do is actually butt this up along the bottom of that batten and then fix it in with those same screws. This side wall now has both of the corners as well as the bottom and the top pieces in place. So it is finally ready to actually start cutting the cladding and screwing it in place. The only thing that I do need to bear in mind about both of these side walls is that this is where the roof is slightly slanted. So I don't want to go and cut every single piece of cladding at the same length, because I'll probably end up having gaps at this end. So what I'm gonna do is cut a couple of them and then keep measuring just to make sure that I'm adjusting that length accordingly as I go along. And you do wanna make sure when you cut this that you're not cutting it absolutely dead on the gap that you've got. You want to actually leave yourself five mil for expansion on either end. So I am making sure just to cut it ever so slightly shorter. And now I've got this first piece of cladding roughly in place. I'm just going to use a spirit level. And I'm hoping that this is level. And it is, perfect. And same again, just using some short corrosive resistant screws, I'm going to drill it at every single place that a batten is running across this side of the workshop. So, and the aim here is to not absolutely welt the screws in so far that you actually split the plastic. You want it in just enough that this isn't going to move anywhere. And if I've done that correctly, this piece should now just slot in next to it. Because I've put in the bottom, you sort of need to bend it and then lift this because it is quite tight. Lift this top bit here, just up a bit. Now get it under there. And then I can bat this in this way. And it does naturally stop when you've got that correct overlap. Again, I'm going to check every single one with a spirit level. Now, as you can imagine, there is quite a lot of cladding to cut and then fix in and not a lot to talk about. So I think it's time to cue the music.
Now, for anyone wondering what I'm gonna do at this point, because a full width of that cladding isn't actually gonna fit there, it's gonna to need to be cut down, I have no idea. After a few minutes of staring at that corner and figuring out what I was going to do, I remembered that Evolution are sponsoring today's video. And in doing so, they have sent me their all new table saw, which comes with a multi-material cutting blade, as well as this really handy outfeed table, which is going to make cutting this long piece of batten a lot easier. If you want to find out more about this particular table saw, then I will link to the full review in the description of this video. And you can use discount code SUMMARY at the checkout to receive 10% off your entire order. So let's get cutting. Right, and now with that cut on the table saw, hopefully this will just slot into here. And because I've cut off the piece of the cladding that you would use to actually fix this to the batten, I am just going to drill a few holes. And now I'm just going to fit on this corner piece just to neaten up this edge. Now that that side wall is done, I've moved on to the front wall. And it occurred to me as I was putting this beading on that this bit here is going to be quite difficult to finish because it's a cut that isn't cut at the top. Let me just get these few pieces in and then I'll show you what I mean. Just like that. And this is why it's going to be difficult because this piece here, if I use this scrap piece as an example, isn't going to allow me to slot it into this J trim here and then feed it behind this piece of cladding here. So I'm going to have to cut this down on my table saw widthways whilst making sure to not cut the very top section that does need to fit behind this top piece of J trim above the door. I made a mark just on the inside of that piece of J trim so I know where I'm going to cut it. So I am just going to practice on this piece first. With that practice piece cut, I'm hoping that I can push this in here and then also get it back there, and I can. So I can cut it at that width, so now I just need to work out the height. So I've made a small incision on the miter saw just below where this piece doesn't need to be cut off. So then I'm going to attempt to use my table saw to take off just this bottom section here. Now I need to go see if that fits. That has taken so long to get in. I managed to mess up this cut twice before actually cutting it on the third time. So this took a long time and it was expensive. As you can see here, I have started on the window wall. So you can see how I've put the trims on here. I've got the main one going along the top and the bottom, and then I've got one at the side of this window and underneath it for now. I have then used a combination of the table saw and the miter saw to cut out the front top corner of this long piece. And what I'm hoping is that this will actually nicely fit into here, although I'm sure it's gonna give me some challenges. So let's see how we get on. So you can see that I've got that piece tucked in on the bottom J trim. And then here it's going sort of into this piece and then on this piece at the side. And then it goes all the way up there and then finishes off nicely, just resting in that top piece of J trim. Now I just need to fill in the shorter pieces underneath the window and see how I end up on this end. Interestingly, because these are much shorter lengths, they're actually a lot harder to bend into these J trims, but you can just get it by just applying a bit of force. I do love how those corner pieces finish off the edge. It looks really good. Okay, so this is the black architrave that I've got to put around the window and the door. And the way I'm gonna fit this is first, just put a little bead of black silicon on the back side of it. And then I'm going to push this up into place. Being really careful not to get silicon everywhere. Go. And just for good measure, I am also gonna bang in a few of these poly pin nails. One slight oversight I had when putting the window in, or actually the structure for the window, is it's very close to the top of this wall. And what that means is I've not left myself enough room to get in two J trims to actually fit nicely. So I'm going to have to think my way around this problem because I don't think a J trim is the right solution. So what I'm going to do is cut off this piece here that's sticking out from this cladding offcut that I've made, and then actually fill it back in using one piece of wood and that should prevent it rocking in that top jade room. So now I've got that piece of wood and I've got this piece of cladding cut down and that should make it stick out enough so the top of that windowsill looks decent. 
and that has worked really nicely. The last thing that I need to do is fit the metal sheeting on the back of the workshop. Now I got this sheeting that you can see here from a company called Cladco. It was the only place that I could find that was reasonably priced However, their delivery charge did make my eyes water just a little bit. In total, I needed six of these panels to cover the back of the workshop, which meant one of them did need to be cut down. And to do that, I just used this Evolution track saw with their multi-material cutting blade attached. How does it go, Daddy? How does it go? Yeah. It's going to spin. It's going to go quite fast. So I need you to stand back there, all right? Now the way that you actually fix these metal sheets to the baton behind it is using these fixing bolts here. You want to start off by just pre-drilling a hole in the metal where you're gonna fix that bolt. Then you can hold that bolt up there and using an impact driver, just drive it home. And the last thing you want to do is just using one of these colored caps, pop that over the top. That's gonna help keep it waterproof, but more importantly, it is just going to make it look a lot nicer. Where the two pieces of metal cladding actually overlap, it's the exact same process. So you just, again, just drill a hole between the two and using a slightly shorter stitcher bolt this time, just put that between them. And then again, just cover that over using one of those same caps. And as you can see, they finish them off really nicely. And some of you might be wondering why I haven't used the composite cladding on the back of the workshop. And the reason for that is this metal cladding is actually a lot cheaper and a lot simpler to install. I'm just going to do you a favor and fast forward through this section of the video where I start to talk about building regulations. If you haven't seen it already, then episode two in this series goes deep into detail and I'll make sure to link it right here. And with that, I can finally say that the outside of the workshop is completely done. It can't be understated enough. This stage of the project has been the most time consuming and the most costly out of the entire workshop build. And yes, mistakes were made along the way, but in the end, I am over the moon with how this workshop looks. If you're enjoying this series so far, then please do consider smashing the like button, and I'll see you in the next episode when we start. Number two.